Hey y'all, I'm Leah Lawrence. And I'm her husband, Mitch Lawrence. And you are listening to the Southern Spirits Podcast, where I regale my husband with Southern stories of the macabre, creepy, and strange. And I drink. So what are you drinking tonight, Mitchell? Our beer tonight is Trace Barbas Mexican style lager. Did you like my um my Mexican accent there? Was that an accent? Trace Barbas. That wasn't um... <laughs> It was pretty bad, wasn't it? Um, I'm going to see what this word means. Nice try. It looks like three beards, maybe? Because it's got three skulls with beards on it on the front. That's what I'm thinking is uh, what it means in in Spanish is beards. It does. It means beards. So it's three beards. Hey, I got it right. And I only passed one semester of Spanish in college. So (laughs) I took Spanish in elementary school. All right, fuck it. Move it on. Look, I only took the one semester, by the way. Brewed and canned by Red Clay Brewing Company in Opelika, Alabama. 4.5% 4.5% alcohol by volume. There's nothing on the cans and nothing on Red Clay's website about this beer. It does exist. <laughs> I know that much uh, because I have it in front of me. But I did find uh, some information online on the Untapped app. So let's read the Untapped bio. Mexican style light lager brewed in celebration of Cinco de Mayo with an exclamation point at the end. Does that mean that this sink that was from like this May? That's old beer. Well, on Untapped, people were drinking it. Uh, you know, like they registered, they were drinking it yesterday and the day before. So it's still being served somewhere. Okay. So I'm maybe just they just brewed a whole bunch of it at once. I, yeah. I don't know how long beer stays good in a can. <laughs> Pretty much forever. Liam. I don't think it's that's like accurate. <laughs> it's like cockroaches. No, sir, that has a shelf life, and I'd like to know what it is. But well, whatever, it's fine. it may have passed. <laughs> Because this beer is nothing special. It's not bad. There's just no flavor to it. It may have passed. Oh, uh, that's not funny. Cinco de Mayo. It, it's it July have passed. <laughs> Good one, Leah. Anyway, the beer is really just flavorless. There's not much to it. It's serviceable because it's easy to sip because it's just four point five percent. But by that, I just mean that it's kind of it. It just kind of tastes like water. So. Yeah, it's bland, but the flavor that is there, I don't care for. I don't yeah. like Mexican-style beers anyway, and that doesn't even seem like a good Mexican-style beer. Well, see, I do. But if you're going to buy this for, you know, 10 bucks for a six-pack, just buy Dos Equis or um, uh, Modelo or something else, because it's just, there's nothing Tecate. to this beer at all. Did you say De Tate? Tecate. Oh, Tecate, honestly, is better than this. It really is, and that's the the like natty light of Mexican beer. But it's better than this. This gets a six out of ten because it's not undrinkable, but it's it's just not good. Red Clay. <laughs> um, I haven't really had anything good from there personally. We do have another beer coming uh, in the latest batch that we bought, so they get another chance. But I have tried Red Clay products elsewhere. Didn't really care for them. Let's hope they get a redemption arc. Yeah. Well, Trace Barbas is not good <laughs> also not bad okay i want to be fair it's not bad but it's not worth ten dollars for a six pack absolutely not i agree with you leah but you know what is what our shot in the dark for the night you can't buy well you can buy that in a six pack but yeah it get kind of pricey <laughs> yeah it's a little bit more than <laughs> 10 bucks this is electric orange appalachian sip and cream produced and bottled by sugarlands distilling company llc in gatlinburg tennessee 20 percent alcohol by volume let's read the bottle our electric orange cream liqueur is a lively citrus burst of oranges cradled in smooth sweet cream i like that cradled that's that's cute uh, this tastes just like a push pop. Does anybody remember push pops? It tastes like a cream sickle, not a push pop. We've yeah. been over this. Yeah, a push pop is a cream sickle. It is not in a push, push pop form. A push pop is <laughs> orange sherbet that has fled fret fled flintstone. It does. It has all of Fred that. Fred Flintstone on the outside of the wrapper. Yeah. A dream sickle is the it's got the uh, vanilla ice cream in the middle of the yep. bar and the orange coating on the outside. Yeah, and that's, that's what, what this it tastes, ta- like. tastes yeah. like because it's like a vanilla orange. It's a it's a dream sickle. Well, that is more accurate. It's like ice cream and orange. So, you know, take with it what you want. It's wonderful. I love it. Leah doesn't care for it as much. 
Um, it's just, I, like, I like it. It tastes good, but that's not my favorite combo of flavors. And there are so many other sipping creams that they make yeah. that are so fucking good that there's no reason to drink that one. Yeah. Butter pecan, banana pudding. Oh, my God. There's so many. Mm-hmm. I, I, that one's fun, but it's not... It's not the cream of the crop. And spoiler alert, all that we have left to review are the sipping creams that we bought, with the exception of one, and there's a special story attached <laughs> to the non sipping cream. So we'll get to that one eventually, but don't y'all worry. Right now, we're just going to talk about this one. Uh, all of their creams are incredible. Like Leah was saying, this is definitely the one that's, you know, the lesser of all of the rest of them, but I still love it. It's really good. Look, and sipping creams, y'all, you can put that shit in coffee as a creamer. Oh, yeah. It's you can put it as like a topping on ice cream. The butter pecan one, I like to stir into pancake mix. It is <laughs> incredible. 10 out of 10 on all of them. I don't care which one it is. They're all wonderful. That one is my least favorite, but it's still fantastic. Yeah, well, I gave it a 9.5 out of 10 because it's not perfect. Um, I've only drank it on ice, though. I don't know what in the world you would mix this with. So it's just by itself on ice and it's real good. 9.5 out of 10. 9.5 out of 10. Probably some vanilla overall. vodka and maybe mm. like a cream soda or something. Oh, that sounds wonderful. Just sort of yeah. really play up the vanilla. Or I guess you could like put it into like an orange soda. I don't know. Yeah. Well, that's it for the alcohols, Leah. It took a while and we stumbled through it. Huzzah. But I believe that we are all done. So what do we have next? We have listener mail. Oh, listener mail. Mm-hmm. It's an email. Okay. And y'all, okay, so we get occasional emails at our email address. Usually yeah. it's something basic like, hey, um, so-and-so did did this or that or something. Who? You, um, I'm not explaining this very well. No. Um, <laughs> saying, you know, hey, do this story or, you know, I'm, I'm new to listening to the podcast. Really enjoy it. Keep up hey. the good work. You know, and, and most <laughs> of the time the subject lines are, are normal. Like, hey, new listener or something like that. I got an email this week. Oh, God. And the, the title, the, the subject line just said, Napoleon's penis. Oh, nice. And I said, you have my attention, man. Mm. I've heard about Napoleon's <laughs> penis before. Like, I, re- I really have. Yeah, I have to. It's a real thing. Um, so I clicked of course, in. Well, it was I- real. <laughs> <laughs> One can only assume, right? Yeah. Uh, poor Josephine. Anyway, <laughs> so I clicked in it, and Barbara has sent us an email, and um, I'm mm. going to read it here. It says, I happen to be reading a spooky book, and for comic relief, they mentioned Napoleon's penis being mm. in New Jersey. So I immediately Googled, <laughs> where is Napoleon's penis? <laughs> I recommend y'all trying it. Worth it. Okay. Which I will agree, Barbara. It is a worthwhile story. It's hilarious. But might I um, give you a recommendation specifically for you, Barbara, because I learned about the Napoleon penis situation (laughs) from a video on YouTube a few years ago. Um, I've recommended this uh, channel before. It's Ask a Mortician. Uh, It's a mortician named Caitlin Doty that Mm -hmm. does a lot of death education and a lot of creepy kind of topics that's super educational, really fun. Love her content. Um, But the particular video that I need you to go look up is called... Napoleon's Penis. No, it's called The Corpse Phallus Capers of Rasputin and Napoleon. And not only will you get the fun, worthwhile story of where Napoleon's penis ended up, you will also get the fun, worthwhile story of what happened to Rasputin's dick. So, Mm. um, just saying, thank you for the email, Barbara, and I would like to recommend that you go uh, give that a watch, because it is an excellent, (laughs) probably demonetized vidya. Barbara, thank you for the email. Now, here are other penises you should check out. (laughs) My husband's not included, (laughs) because there aren't any videos about that one Yet. yet. I was say, it only becomes a video once it becomes detached from your body. Yep. So let's see what happens. Balls in your court, sir. Pun intended. Oh, Leah. <laughs> oh, that's all that will be left in the court. Oh, Goodness. love it. Oh, well, that was an excellent listener mail segment. And so. also, uh, you know, slash Leah's uh, video <laughs> recommendations. You know, I, I do what I can. Leah's penis recommendations. You have any of those for us? I've only met the one, so... Oh, good God. What are you going to (laughs) do? Okay. Well, this was a mistake. 10 out of 10 would recommend, but like... Oh, Jesus, Leah. (laughs) Probably don't, because I'll shank a bitch. I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> oh, God. Let's move on. Uh, okay. That's enough. All right. Well, we have a sassy Southern saying for the evening, and it is also brought to you by Listener Mail, which oh, is exciting yay. because Leah had to do less work this yeah, week. Yeah, there was another sassy Southern saying that came in. Yeah, there was. How um, exciting. So... This is from Marissa, and Marissa's email reads as such him. <laughs> so I am mid or I am still mid listen, but I absolutely love this episode three fifty five. Which was that? I have no idea. I didn't <laughs> look it up. I'm I don't such know. An we idiot. don't number them anyway, however the, the apps number them. Uh, so. Anyway. But I thought I might send in some sayings my grandpa is known for. Okay. There are two. The first he says, quote Take the dick out of your mouth and speak to me. (laughs) Mostly when someone mumbles near him. Then, quote, the sun even the sun even shines on a dog's ass sometimes. Yeah. End quote. Uh, This is his response or sarcastic response to good news. Grandpa was raised in the South, but not sure where he picked these ones up. Mm. Anyway, love y'all. Happy holidays. He sounds like a peach. Yeah. (laughs) Thank you. And, uh... (laughs) I've heard the dick in the mouth one before, but goddamn, that's funny. I've heard that one, but it's always take the foot out of your mouth. But I also well, grew up in a lot more polite society yeah. than Mitchell did, so there you go. I mean, you can call it polite. I call it sheltered. Fun. Because, I mean, we did a lot of talking about and with dicks in our mouths. Uh, you How know. many dicks can you get in your mouth and still pronounce things? Uh, Well... Let's just not go there. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I've actually Let it be tried, the ultimate game but... of Fluffy Bunny is all I'm saying. Yeah, I mean, uh, okay. <laughs> New episode of Midweek Minis coming up soon. Live stream on Facebook. We're going to buy as many, uh, you know. Phallus dil- shaped things well, dildos as possible. is what I was going to say that we can find. And all different shapes and sizes. Look, dildos I can't get behind, but if you put whole dill pickles in my mouth, it's oh, probably yeah. like six. You know, we have that. We have a giant, <laughs> like when we go to the store and get pickles, we get the giant like ballpark jar of whole dill pickles. And there's one in the pantry right now that's full. And we 100% could sit here in this room on Facebook and shove pickles in our mouth. I'm not going to do that. But. I would. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Somebody pay for it, though. <laughs> then we'll talk about it. Oh, Lord. Anyway, so thank you for uh, to Marissa for sending that in. That was delightful, and your grandpa sounds like fun. Thank you. That was so much fun. I thought so. I enjoyed myself. I did, too. Yeah. Two for the price of one, too. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> yeah, you should have saved one. I should have. That was not uh, <sighs> good foresight. In my personal opinion. But if anybody else does have a sassy Southern saying or a saying, look, I'll expand it. It doesn't have to be Southern. If you've got some kind of weird expression where you're from, I'd like to know about it. If you're from a different country than the United States, if you're from a different region, hey, pile in. Let's learn about other people's cultures. I'm totally fine with that. And I'm interested to to see what y'all email me. So uh, just explain it, though, because if it's some like... No, just just the saying, please. <laughs> Six wind chimes don't make an organ. Like I don't. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't. You gotta explain it. That's all. Well. So yeah, I'm send okay that to uh, Southern Spirits Podcast at gmail dot com, and I'd be happy to read them on uh, the podcast. Thank you, everyone. Woo! And we will see you then. Whenever what? y'all email us. And if bonus points, if your subject line is more tantalizing than Napoleon's penis. Mm. Yeah. What can you do, man? Attach some nudes in there. <laughs> N- maybe don't. <laughs> they don't have to be of you. Just something. <laughs> I don't want them. I'm good. F- <laughs> no. Yeah, please don't that's do that. A, that's a no from me. I'm good. But if you do have animal pics, like dogs, totally into dog pics. <laughs> anyway, uh, are you ready for the first uh, story of the evening? I am. Okay. I don't know about everybody else. Well, we are going to Florida. Yay, these are my favorite. Yeah, we're going to Clearwater, Florida, and we are going to be talking about a cryptid. And the cryptid is called, very creatively, the Clearwater Monster. Oh, come on, y'all. <laughs> right? It's always like, guys, try a little bit harder before you put it in the paper, right? Yeah. You can do better than that. But what was the time period? Because the maybe 40s. they didn't have many monsters. The, 40s, the 40s has lots of monsters. Oh, okay. Well, all right. 
Okay. So, yeah. So, um, this all started in February of 1948, excuse me, not 84. Uh You know I have that dyscalculia problem and numbers. I apologize. Anyway, so 1948 in Clearwater, Florida. Mm -hmm. It was pretty small back then. Uh, Nowadays, it's like the, isn't Clearwater where like the Church of Scientology is headquartered? It is. That is the headquarters of the Church of Scientology. And I know people from Clearwater. That's weird. That, uh... I don't think they're Scientologists. No, I mean, I don't think most of the people in Clearwater are. It's just they've got a bunch of, like, organizational stuff there. But anyway, fun yeah. fact. Uh, but anyway, it, it's a large town now. But then it was only a small town of about 15,000 people, about the size of the town that we live in now. Okay. Right? I don't know. I don't know how big Hartzell is. It might be bigger than that. It that, 15,000 was about how much it was when I was a kid. I'm sure it's grown since then. But anyway. Okay. Um, they, it, it's, a you know, a lovely... Uh, Florida town, I'm sure. Uh, and, you know, Gulf beaches and all of that stuff. Uh, mm-hmm. Swimming. Uh, lots of, of, of beach. Lots of Florida things <laughs> that you so come to Florida there. for. Right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so but it was just a nice, quiet beach town is what I'm getting at. Uh-huh. And they all of a sudden started seeing these mis- mis- mysterious i'm oh, having a hard time yeah mysterious footprints in the sand and they had three toes on each foot and they were about 14 inches long and 15 inches across and they were deep like pressed deep into the sand oh no and uh it just sort of looked like the the trail came up out of the water and it followed along the shore for about two miles, and then it went back into the sea. Um, so they saw these footprints, and they're like, holy shit, what the ever-loving fuck is this thing? It's <laughs> massive. It's so far sunk down into the sand. Something is going on. So the locals reported it. Someone came out. They photographed the footprints. They made plaster casts of these footprints. Experts came in and were baffled by it, and they are like... As deep as this fucking, like, footprint is, and on this sand and in these conditions, this thing has to weigh, like, 2,000 pounds. Like, this is a big-ass motherfucking creature. Um, This makes sense. No one had no idea what the hell was going on. They were very concerned. It caused a flap. Oh, yeah. A Florida flap. There's always a good flap. Mm Mm-hmm. And so the prints continued to appear up and down sort of the area in different different spots. So mm-hmm. it would show up on, uh, so the Sewanee River runs r- nearby, um, about a mile north of Clearwater. And it uh, has, you know, sort of where the river flows into the ocean, that sort of delta area. Yeah. Um, a lot of the footprints would show up there on the banks of that river. It would show up on some of the islands that are in the Gulf, like some of the little barrier island situations, the little small reefy kind of things. Okay. Um, There were footprints all over the place. And, you know, not just centrally located in Clearwater, a couple miles away here and there, it was spread out. This this thing is traveling. Um, So it's concerning a lot of people. And uh, it becomes, you know, a pretty big sensation. They call it the Clearwater Monster. Uh, sometimes people call it Old Three Toes, which is, <laughs> is oh, great. Oh, man, to have that nickname. So, oh. Old Three Toes. Uh, like, <laughs> the not terribly creative journalists at the time, I'm just saying. Um, but Old Three Toes actually knocked over a lifeguard stand at one point. And uh, when it did that, it left behind some strange feathers and hair or like some kind of fiber debris they weren't exactly sure what it was and you know being 48 they couldn't really identify it specifically Mm -hmm. um so it left some like fur and feathers behind which why does it have both but okay um but anyway so in july uh so it's it's been a couple months from february to july um some students uh, that were enrolled in like a flying school there in Florida, they were learning how to be um, like pilots that uh, sprayed crops mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Crop dusting, I guess. Yeah. Uh, but just a general learning how to fly pilot school. They were doing training exercises over this beach in the area of Clearwater and they saw this weird looking creature sort of floating, swimming, kind of hanging out in the water near the Clearwater Bridge. And they described it as it being, quote, 
a furry log with a head like a large boar. Oh, that doesn't sound like an animal. Um, which is weird, if you ask me. It could just be a large log with like a weird looking end and some moss growing on it, but who knows. Mm-hmm. Um, and then another couple said that they saw this huge furry beast just a walking along the beach uh but it ran into the ocean and they didn't see it up close so they couldn't exactly say what it was but they definitely saw the monster um Mm -hmm. so it had gained a lot of attention over the last few months it had even gone so far as to get into some of the like interesting like quip kind of pages in some of the more national newspapers um so it got it the story of Old Three Toes, uh, or the Clearwater Monster, made its way to New York City, uh, where a man named Ivan Sanderson read the story and became very interested in it. Um, so Ivan Sanderson, if you don't know who he is, which, shame on you if you don't, um, he's the father of modern cryptozoology. Oh, um, he's say, actually the person is. that uh, he's the person that made up the term cryptozoology, coined, I guess, coined it. Mm-hmm. Um but he's the one who who came up with that that word, um, and he was by trade uh, and and profession a zoologist. But he was very interested in uh, you know stories of different creatures that uh, you know modern science doesn't really believe in, but could possibly be like you know uh, silverback gorillas were thought to be mythological, but they're not. Really? Uh, yeah. People didn't believe in silverback gorillas? They didn't believe in silverback gorillas to surprisingly modern days. I had no idea. Yeah, uh, um, Okapi are the same way. So, I mean, there are several different varieties of animal that were quote unquote once encrypted, but mm. are, are, you know, proven Always to be. Encrypted, right. <laughs> proven to be uh, a real, you know. Um, so he was really interested in that particular field of study. And so he comes down to Florida and examines the evidence, looks into it, sees the cast of the prince, really like studies the shape of the, the prince and all of mm-hmm. that stuff. And he makes a determination. In his expert zoological opinion, the explanation that he was willing to give to the entire nation was... That the tracks are, in fact, from a previously unknown species of giant penguin. <laughs> this is a professional now, right. like a, a like a legitimate professional in his field. He mm. said, oh, Florida, I think you have a massive penguin. <laughs> now, I don't think you understand how massive of a penguin he thought it was. So yeah. shot in the dog. Okay, hold on. How tall did Sanderson believe this giant penguin actually was? Was it A, 11 feet tall? Was it B, 13 feet tall? Or was it C, 15 feet tall? Um, I know that we said the footprints were big and that they were deep into the sand. I'm going to say 13 you're incorrect. He oh. believed that this penguin got up to 15 feet tall. Ridiculous. That's a big ass penguin. <laughs> yeah. And also, like, when they're that big, do they just cool themselves off? Do they have internal insulation? So, like, well, not would... insulation, but whatever keeps you cool, you know. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. Yeah. It's just a big ass, a 15 fucking foot penguin. I just, it makes me happy. Jesus, I would love but anyway, to see that. Also, and it lives in the ocean? Because like, yeah. penguins nowhere live in the ocean. Look. You know, like they swim a lot, but they don't live in the ocean. Look, all I know is that he thought it was 15 foot tall and he had a degree in zoology. Like, it comes up for its two mile walk where it refills its <laughs> lungs and then it goes back in for the rest of the night. You don't know. Maybe. <laughs> But anyway, so uh, the footprints continued to appear occasionally, um, maybe once or twice a year for the next 10 years. Oh, really? Uh, But no one ever actually saw the giant penguin. Yeah. Because. Go ahead. Camouflage? I don't (laughs) know. Like, who misses a fucking 15 foot penguin just taking a two mile waddle on the beach? All of Florida. (laughs) Have you ever 
ever seen Florida. <laughs> I mean, I have, but I don't think meth was as prominent back then as it is now. So I feel like someone must have spotted a 15 foot penguin if it was going for a two mile jaunt. It's but... a vicious cycle. You know, like the meth doesn't bring on the crazy. <laughs> it's the crazy begets the meth begets the crazy begets the. It's, it's an amplifier. It just keeps going. I got you. Um, but anyway, um, Unfortunately, no one ever saw this penguin, and it turns out, surprise, surprise, Mm -hmm. there was never a fucking giant 15-foot penguin, which makes my heart sad, but it turns out there was a man named Tony Signorini, that's hard to say. That is Italian for penguin. (laughs) Tony Signorini, I think, I'm sure I'm saying it wrong, but anyway, Tony... Uh, was actually the guy behind this whole thing. He was the penguin? He was the penguin. And he was wearing 30-pound, three-toed lead shoes. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, Tony, how are you going to walk two miles <laughs> in 60 pounds of foot? I think it's 15 pounds per foot, okay, not either way, 30. Jesus anyway, so uh, Tony and his boss at Auto Electric uh, were well-known pranksters. They oh, like to trick each other and make jokes and ha-ha's. And uh, his boss's name was Al Williams. And they, uh, Williams had seen a National Geographic magazine that had a photo of dinosaur tracks Mm -hmm. uh, that they had found in the Midwest. And he was like, oh, that's neat. I could make something like that here. Um, And so using the tools in the auto body shop that they worked at, they fabricated metal feet attached to tennis shoes. And they decided to just prank the neighborhood. So they took a little rowboat that they had in the middle of the knot. And Al was rowing the getaway boat. And Tony had the feet on. And so Tony gets out in these big old honking shoes. And he just leaves these ridiculous footprints. And then they would get back in the boat and, you know, wander off. So there weren't any, like, human-looking footprints to sort of look like, hey, I walked out here with shoes and put them on, you know. Just trying to be as mysterious as possible. And when it caught attention that first time, they were like, that's fucking hilarious. So they kept doing it. <laughs> yeah. And they kept doing it. They kept doing it just because it was fun. Yeah. Um, and no one was any of the wiser um, because Tony didn't say anything because um, he didn't want to get anybody in trouble himself, anybody else. Um, so... Uh, his boss, uh, Al Williams, died in 1969, and Ivan Sanderson, thankfully, died in 1973, so he didn't have to worry about the fallout from this situation. God. Um, but uh, Tony waited all the way until 1988 to come clean about this thing, just so everybody else that was involved and could get blowback from this was already dead and gone, and, you know, it was fine. Um, so he revealed, hey, y'all, I'm old three toes, and no, but everybody was like, look, dude, you're not old three toes what the fuck you're not no and he was like look i've totally still got the shoes so he you can find it online pictures of him in the old three-toed shoes tramping around and just <laughs> pictures of him with these crazy ass shoes and they compared him to the original cast and sure enough it was it was him so the giant 15 foot tall penguin it's just some dude in some silly looking uh shoes that he made in an auto body shop that, my awesome. friends, is the Clearwater Monster. I love that so much. I do, too. Yeah. <laughs> it makes me want to make shoes. Uh, I No, doesn't do that to me. It, uh, it just makes me happy that other people enjoy trolling as much as I do. <laughs> It's so much fun. It, like, that's a dedicated troll, though. Like, two miles in 30 pounds on your feet? Like, that's a lot. I'm never going to commit to something. In the sand? Shit. Yeah, exactly. I'm never going to commit at that level for something. <laughs> but, oh, that makes me so happy. It's a great story. I yeah. love it a lot. It was. It was it's a great one. Okay. Yeah. So, I started you off with a really good, cheerful, funny <laughs> Ha ha, LOL story, right? Uh, okay. So here we go. That's clearly a warning to everybody out there that the second story of the evening is less charming, less wholesome. Uh, a lot of people die. Mm. So um, I'm just saying this is about a family massacre. Uh. So if children being killed really freaks you out or upsets you, trigger warning, don't listen to the rest of this. Okay, everybody good? 
We'll see y'all next time. God damn it. Okay, cool. All right. So everybody that's left over clearly is morbid as shit. And I'm going to tell you the story mm. of the Lawson family massacre. So this happened in Germantown, North Carolina. And the reason I'm telling it now is because it happened on Christmas Day. Oh, well, here we go. And it's like Christmas. So, you know. Uh, let's let's hear it. So, uh, this was Christmas Day in mm. 1929. Um, so, little backstory. There's a man named Charlie Lawson. He married a woman named Fanny Manring, which is a great name. Manring. 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 Okay. Uh-huh. Uh, and they had been married for 18 years. During this 18 years, they had had eight children, four sons, four daughters. Mm-hmm. Their third child, whose name was William, died. As a baby in 1920. Oh. So they had seven living children in 1929, which is when we're talking about. Um, and and they were all, you know, alive and doing okay on December the 25th. Uh, it, it didn't stay that way for long. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and do a shot in the dark right here because oh. it just gets worse and downhill and scary from here. So well, let's do it then. All right. So. Shot in the dark. Mm. The Lawson family worked as sharecroppers raising a very particular crop. What crop did they grow? What crop was it? <laughs> yeah, and, and the show that's sweeping the nation. <laughs> what crop was it? <laughs> uh, but crop, it... <laughs> crop, crop, crop. What crop was it? <laughs> Stop. Um, but in, and just bear in mind, this is North Carolina. So was it A tobacco, B cotton, or C peanuts? Um, I think that it's going to be tobacco. You're correct. It is Yay, tobacco. I am. I'm still taking the shot, though, because Leah is still on antibiotics. Last day, so. though. Huzzah. Yeah. Oh, she just took her last one, but I'm still going to. Bacterial infections can't keep me down. Yeah. I mean, they <laughs> I mean, have. They, they, they are <laughs> currently. <laughs> it, it, it legitimately sucks. Um, like, anyway. This is happening. <laughs> but, you know. We're, we're, we're getting better. It's okay. fun. All right. So, yeah, they were actually tobacco sharecroppers, and uh, they had worked as sharecroppers for a very long time. But uh, in uh, 1927, they had actually finally saved up enough money to buy their own farm, which was great for them. Um, you know, if you're a sharecropper, you're basically working for almost nothing, and you're, you know, taking care of someone else's crops. So, it's not great. Um so they finally, you know, moved up, gotten a little bit of money, and have been able to at least, you know, sustain themselves, which mm. is great for them. Um, what was sort of weird, though, is so before Christmas, they went and got a family portrait. Now, they were still very poor farm people at this time. They had their own farm, but it wasn't. They were not wealthy people. They were lower middle class at best. Um, And when they went to get this portrait, uh, Charlie, the father, was like, yeah, we're going to go get this portrait. They had never had a portrait made of the family before. Um, And on top of getting a portrait made, which was pretty expensive, uh, they were all like he bought every member of the family brand new clothes and that's once again very expensive at the time and kind of weird uh but that's you know there's a photo of this entire family a couple of days before they all died um spoiler alert uh, and it's super creepy Uh, just because a the photography back then is just creepy because you know exposure times being what they were they all look kind of mean um but you know everybody is in brand new clothes has this very first and only photo of them all together that had ever been taken uh and it was just a little weird because, yeah, I mean, they didn't have the money for that. And everybody, you know, in hindsight, finds that very odd. Um, but the actual true crime part of it that we're going to be talking about starts on Christmas afternoon. Mm. So uh, after the morning, you know, festivities, breakfast and whatnot, um Mr. Lawson had gone out hunting with their oldest son, Arthur, and they had run out of shells or whatever, and he sent the son into town to go get, you know, some bullets or shells or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. Um, And so 
Lawson, Mr. Charlie Lawson, had had come back to the house and was sort of waiting by the tobacco barn, waiting for, for Arthur to come back. And his daughters, the, the younger girls, Carrie and Maybelle, they were 12 and 7, uh, were leaving the the farm to go down the street to visit their aunt and uncle for Christmas. And uh, Charlie, turns out, did still have bullets in his shotgun because mm-hmm. he shot each of them once and then he took uh the butt end of the rifle and bludgeoned them the rest of the way to death Ugh. because yep that's I'm how that happened um, i'm excited that we're doing this so he has already killed two children at this point and and beat them uh, severely and he takes their bodies and he puts them in the tobacco barn and he goes off in search for the rest of his family and unfortunately he finds the rest of his family um, he yeah. goes back to the house and he immediately shoots Fanny his wife who was just sitting and rocking on the porch um, and after he killed her he found so his children. She didn't hear any gunshots? I'm sure they did, but I mean, they had been out hunting, so it wasn't unusual. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, okay. so after he he killed his wife, he found the other four kids. He shot his 17-year-old daughter first. Her name was Marie. And then he shot his two sons, uh, James and Raymond, who were four and two. And then he didn't even shoot the baby, Mary Lou. She was four months old. He just beat her to death. Oh, my God. Yeah. Four month old? Four month old. Um, So the only child at this point, that the only other member of the family at this point that is not dead, is the eldest son who is off on an errand, Mm. um, which people think that he intentionally sent that kid off because he wasn't planning on killing that one, but nobody knows what that motive is or why. Um, But the oldest son, Arthur, did not get annihilated in this family annihilation situation. Um, So... After all of these families, you know, all of the kids had been killed, he killed the wife, all of that had happened, he escapes into the woods out behind their farm. And he goes out to, or well, actually, before he goes out into the woods, he creepily, like, gets all of their bodies lined up and positioned together. So he gives them a big rock under each of their heads like a pillow, and he crosses their arms, like, and sort of displays them you Uh, know which is creepy and then he runs into the woods um and he stays there for several hours so after he's in the woods arthur the son that is you know not dead shows up and is looking around and he realizes that not only is his entire You know, all of his siblings are dead. His mom is dead, but his dad is missing. So mm, this is clearly problematic. Yeah, a little bit. He freaks out, obviously, and he goes into town, gets the law. And, you know, it it was not long before the entire area had heard and all the friends and neighbors had come over and were looking for this guy. Because at this point, everybody's pretty sure he just killed everybody. So uh, they're out looking for him. And all of a sudden they hear a shot from the woods. And eventually they follow that sound and, you know, the direction that it was heard from. And they end up finding Charlie's body next to a tree. And apparently he had been sort of pacing around that tree because he had kind of worn like a path around that tree. He had probably been pacing, trying to either bring himself to escape or to kill himself. Who knows? But it was just like a ring around that tree in the dirt of where he had been pacing so quickly around. Um, And he had letters on his body to his parents, but they don't address the deaths or the killings at all. Just like a, hey, how are you? Family's great kind of letters to his family <laughs> yeah. were on his body. Um, how wonderful. Yeah. But like I said, everybody, you know, you assume he, he probably killed himself there. Um, 
And no one, there was just not a motivation for any of this. They weren't in financial troubles because they had recently, you know, gotten out of their financial troubles. He had been spending more money. Like he had just gotten uh, that family portrait taken. He had bought them all new clothes. Like he he was financially doing okay as Mm -hmm. far as everybody knew. Um some people said that he had uh, had a head injury a couple months before, but they did an autopsy and there wasn't any kind of evidence of brain damage. Mm-hmm. Um, so a lot of people discount that. Um, and there was also a rumor at the time that maybe he wasn't the one that actually committed the murders, that they like witnessed a mob murder thing and they were all just taken out for him to be quiet like there were lots of very convoluted weird explanations for this shit that don't make a lot of sense yeah i was gonna say just the guy just killed everybody yeah so uh there is a book that was written about this particular case and it was released in 1990 and it was called white christmas bloody christmas by an author named trudy j smith And in that book, the author mm, makes a very interesting theory as to why they believe he killed him. So they did a bunch of research and were talking to relatives and neighbors and were going through diaries and all of this stuff and etc. But basically, the theory that they put forth in that particular book is that... uh, the father was having an incestuous relationship with the oldest daughter. Jesus. Um, and the thought is that she had gotten pregnant and he just couldn't handle any of the connotations or the ramifications of that. And he decided, well, shit, let's kill everybody. Um, oh, good God. <clears throat> but there really isn't a lot of evidence for that. Like, A lot of people point to that picture, that last picture that they took, saying that it looks like she's a little bit pregnant or something like that. Um, Once again, I I don't know that I believe that so much as, like, this guy was seriously mentally ill and hit it pretty well and just lost it. You know what I mean? Like, there was no history of abuse or stories of abuse from any of the people, you know, the son that made it through you know didn't die like he didn't report that there was any issues or any underlying things that it could have been i just legitimately think the dude was mentally ill and it wasn't treated you know that's what it sounds like um but yeah so he's he's what we call a family annihilator um and a lot of the times they will it's they'll they'll kill everybody and kill themselves or they'll kill everybody and they'll skip town and and go live somewhere else you know Um, but anyway, so after that family died, um, it turns out Charlie's brother, uh, whose name is Marion Lawson, decided it would be an awesome thing to do to just sort of open their murder house, their murder farm up Uh as a tourist attraction. And that tourist attraction even had, um, (laughs) like as one of their big displays was like uh it was a cake that the the eldest daughter had made that christmas morning for christmas dinner and they kept this nasty like they preserved it yeah they kept that cake just on and then visitors started to pick the raisins out of the cake Ew, as why? like souvenirs Ew. and so they had to put it under glass so people would stop taking the raisins out of this murder cake the most disturbing part of the whole story right there yeah ew <laughs> fucking ew Go, go. How expensive are raisins, y'all? It wasn't go. because it was a raisin. It was no. because it was a like a souvenir go of this creepy buy a thing. raisin and say, this is a raisin that the murdered girl made. Just fucking shit, y'all. Yeah. You don't need the raisin. Yeah, I, it, it grossed me out pretty hard. But Ugh. anyway, so like I said, he opened it up as a tourist attraction. And uh, 
basically everybody in the town was like, dude, this is fucking tacky as shit and you shouldn't be doing this. And he was like, it's my property now and I can do whatever the fuck I yeah, want with it. Bitches. So, yeah. yeah. He was, like I said, the town was very not okay with it, but he could, within the law, do whatever he wanted with that property. Um, and so he did. Um, and... Uh, there were actually a lot of songs written and there's a couple of books, a movie uh, about this particular situation. But I think the most famous thing that came out of it is a song. Uh, most people that don't know the Stanley Brothers, which nobody but people that were raised like me on uh, old Americana and bluegrass kind of music would yeah. know. But um, yeah, it's called The Murder of the Lawson Family and it is a very sad song uh, as, as one would imagine. Uh, but it was released and recorded by the Stanley Brothers in uh, 1956. So I never it, heard of them. It is a pretty popular song. Um, you can look it up on YouTube. There are several good recordings of it. But um, yeah, it's sad uh, as hell. But <laughs> <laughs> the Lawson family uh, was all buried in a, a local family graveyard. Uh, that the, It was for the family of the W.D. Browder uh, but they allowed, you know, because they didn't have a plot and there was no one left to pay for it. Um, they That family allowed them a small area. And so they didn't really have enough space to, like, bury everybody in a coffin oh, individually, God. all that stuff. So they buried them all in one grave with one headstone. And it is in the same place that they buried the son that died. Um, so it had all ten of them in one little section uh, of this graveyard and and it's still there and the I think uh yeah here it is um the headstone and like I said Charlie's in there too the one that killed him everybody's together um oh it's non because the Arthur kid made it but anyway um it says uh on the headstone not now but in the coming years it will be better land we'll read the remit hold on let me try that again you got this <laughs> let me try again not now, but in the coming years, it will be in a better land. We'll read the meaning of our tears, and then some time we'll understand. Um, and that's uh, drink. What's, <laughs> no, I don't. That's everybody drink. That's Hoist not the your toast. goblets <laughs> high into the sky. <laughs> not the toast. <laughs> but anyway, that is a very sad uh, Christmas murder uh, spree for you. Well. Thank you for staying on theme. <laughs> You're welcome. Jesus, Leah, that was you rough. Don't like a good festive murder. Oh, I love Lord. a good festive murder. Uh, you know me. Sorry. Man, I would just, I, I really prefer them centered around Arbor Day. <laughs> I mean, good God. Bless it. Those two shots of uh, sipping cream are kind of catching up to me, Leah. Is it the sugar or the alcohol? It's the alcohol because I've also had a lot of beer today. Yes, you have. So uh, it was a good day. It was a real good day. I'm happy for With you. With the exception of the last 20 to 25 minutes. <laughs> That's kind of sucked. Is it because of the uh, stories or was it? No, I just have a lot of gas. <laughs> Gross. Things are, I'm, I'm a little bloated. I'm sorry. As they say. Uh, but yeah, it was the story for sure. <laughs> 100%. I hate, I hate, I don't like that. I'm sorry. Because I just feel like, you know, I might be that guy one day, just like snap and just like, you know. Mitchell, we've had this conversation <laughs> before. Look, dude, if you're uh, going to murder your entire family, maybe just divorce me. Yeah. Well, it, w know. it wouldn't be a, a sex thing, though. It's just, you know, I got to find a way out of this. And that way is through divorce. No, I mean, like, my life in general, you know, the whole thing all together. <laughs> Look. Look, j <laughs> just you, babe. Yeah. Just you. Just me what? J you can only do it for just you. Oh, I can off myself is yeah. what you're saying. I mean, don't, please, yeah. preferably. But if it's a choice. <laughs> yeah, we should. I shouldn't be making light of that. Of course, I could never do something like that anyway. Oh, but God, Leah, sometimes. But if you're going to murder suicide me, please just divorce me. Sometimes when I wake up and the blankets aren't on me anymore, I kind of think about maybe I'll just take you out to the tobacco shed. <laughs> Look, blankets are my favorite thing and <laughs> <laughs> I can never have enough and you have some and I want them. 
Okay, well, all you have to do is ask instead of ripping them off me in the middle of the night. It's not a conscious thing. It's just a <laughs> it's a heat seeking like mechanism. Like Ugh. I will blanket burrito myself in layer after layer after layer of blanket, yeah. and like I need that final tortilla to make my little cocoon. You know? Oh, who doesn't love that final tortilla? <laughs> <laughs> and your blanket oh. is, in fact, my final tortilla. If it if it's so <laughs> hefty that you gotta that you gotta add one more tortilla. Look, and what's super impressive about that is though that I sleep with like the, my base blanket. Look, I'm not kidding. I really do sleep with a ton of blankets, but yeah. my base blanket is a 25 pound weighted blanket. Mm-hmm. So not only am I lugging around that 25 pound blanket while I'm flipping over and blanket burritoing and other things, <laughs> I got two or three other blankets on top of that that are smaller and they're just mine. Yeah. And then what he's talking about me stealing is the quilt that goes over the whole bed. Yeah. So by the time that I wake up in the morning, I'm approximately 110 degrees on the inside because I'm the comfiest fucking little little warm bed bug that ever was. Except, and y'all, I'm going to explain this, except (laughs) for your butt. Leah has, it is the weirdest goddamn thing in the world. What happens to Leah? Leah loses heat out of her ass. It's true, I do. Like. Everything on feet. Leah can be perfectly, you know, normal human temperature. And she goes, touch my ass real quick. And I reach down there and it's like a goddamn freezer just on her ass cheeks. It's the weirdest fucking thing in the world. That, that, like that happens to my feet. Yeah. My feet get cold. My feet do that too. And are cold to the touch. But it happens to Leah's butt cheeks. <laughs> and she always wear like she's not sitting around naked. <laughs> no, she's wearing pants the pants whole time. On. But for some reason, it's like, it's almost as if all of her pants are just ripped on the back. Now, none of this is what's happening, but they're just like, they're not, like she has those, those onesies with the flap you can unbutton and she just like puts her ass up against the freezer, but it's all times of day. Yeah, it is. And what's really weird is like, even if I'm running a fever, like I could be running like a very intense, problematic, like 103 kind of fever and my ass will still be freezing. It's, I don't. It's so weird. It's real weird. It's the weirdest Um, thing. And I've looked it up and like all the, like, um, there's no necrosis. There's no, like, I don't have diabetes. They've tested me. Like, I'm fine. <laughs> it's just, for whatever reason, my ass is a giant heat sink. It's, it's, it's seriously real weird. one of the weirdest things I've ever witnessed. It's the mystery of Leah's ass. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, there we go. There's the episode <laughs> title. <laughs> oh, maybe we don't call it that. Uh. I mean, no promises, because that's a good one. But for real... Leah, that something's wrong. Something's going on with <laughs> no, your ass. No, I've I've legitimately asked a, a medical professional and I've really? googled it. Yeah, I'm fine. You've seriously gone into a doctor's office and been like, "Look, this is going to sound weird, but like my butt is really cold." It all was the when time. I was in college, um, and I was living in a dormitory that legitimately did not have as good of a heating and cooling system as it should have because mm-hmm. it was a very old building. Um, and like my ass was cold all the time and like the rest of me could be super warm and like fuzzy pajamas anyway. But yes, I did ask like my first adult, like after the pediatrician, you know, the first so actual weird. like adult doctor that I got, I was like, hey, uh, Sarah, um, my <laughs> ass is cold all the time. Is that a problem? And she was like, what? No, for real. Like, just touch it. Just. <laughs> and she did. And did I she really? Like, yeah. And. Please tell me she wasn't wearing a glove so that she could be like, yeah, that's that's fucked up. Like, you should see someone else. <laughs> you should not be in this office right now. Anyway, um, we talked about it. They did tests for, like, diabetes and shit. I'm fine. <laughs> I don't have it. I'm good. I just like, have a weird ass. Most people lose toes to diabetes. <laughs> Leah's losing butt cheeks. Look, if I could lose a little bit of ass to- <laughs> But like, I don't a, want the betas, but if I have to have the betas, take the ass. What you're wanting to lose, though, is in your hips. Like, it's not butt cheek. So. No. Do you know how big my butt cheeks are? Like, yes, Y'all, this is I way do. too far. <laughs> but like, I do, because I sometimes use them for a cooling system. Like, if I'm real sweaty, because you like it super warm, I just kind of cuddle up on it. And, and it cools me right down. It's so nice. Look. 
we need to get off the subjects. Yeah. Would you like me to cut all of this out so that we don't talk about your how cold your ass is? I really oh. don't give a shit. I don't. Um, I'm really. It's it's difficult to embarrass me about like stuff like that because just you know it's medical information that I don't care. It's, not, it's not medical. I mean, it is. I, mean, I guess, but if any if any of our listeners suffer from cold ass. <laughs> <laughs> Send us an email, southernspiritpodcast at gmail.com. Do you have another cold body part we need to know about? Yeah. Send us an email. How cold is Rasputin's penis? <laughs> oh, yeah. Do any of you... So- oh, God. Male <laughs> listeners. Or <laughs> let's just say listeners with a penis. Yes. Better. If any of you just have... Like, <laughs> just like the head of your penis gets cold when nothing else does. <laughs> we really, really want to know about that. <laughs> Uh, anomalous phenomenon uh, oh. is is definitely happening. happening. That is so funny. <sighs> anyway, <sighs> well, are you ready to stop talking about my butt and get into a toast? Not really. Let's <laughs> keep talking about that cold butt. No, I'm, go I'm ahead. Go Do no. a toast. All right. Everybody, hoist your uh, <laughs> whatever you've got left high into the <sighs> sky. We're going to do a toast. Okay. <laughs> A 15-foot penguin is really quite absurd. A man in lead shoes is an awfully odd bird. I hope Christmas murders didn't give you a fright. Merry Christmas to all and to all a good night. Nice, Leah. Do you do that every year on Christmas? Yeah. Do you end them with a... Yeah. I thought so. I feel like I remember that, you know, somewhere along Anytime the Anytime I've done a Christmas-themed Christmas episode, I've finished it that way. Yeah. Thematically well, appropriate ending. Thematically appropriate ending. When we make the musical about our lives, that's going to be the closing song. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great idea. Oh, Leah, you, you're just full of ideas today. Right? You know? You're great. You're great. Thanks. Anybody that says differently, you're an asshole. Who says differently out there, though? A couple of people on Apple Podcasts that have reviewed. Oh, my God. I would love to talk about that. It's been a while since we looked at the it's reviews. It's fantastic, and I love them. This was months ago when we saw them. Y'all, I feel the need to say one more time that I doubt that any of you actually listening need to hear this, but <laughs> I want to just remind anyone that might be concerned that or confused, not concerned. That this is a comedy show, okay? If you are taking things seriously to the point that it is hurting your feelings that we talk about, for instance, when I said, since I grew up in the South, that Southern accents are just you speaking lazily. (laughs) If you take that seriously to the point where you get offended, you might want to take a break from just like entertainment in general, because... That's only supposed to make you laugh. It's not supposed to make you go, "Uh, hold on now. I try real hard when I talk. That calm the fuck down. You need to take, you're living the show. And this is just two fat asses sitting in front of a computer drinking. Like I've been, I've literally had 11 beers today. I've been drinking all day. And you're going to take what I said seriously. If we've been living rent free so long in your head that it's. (laughs) It's come to you being upset about something that we said, baby doll. Put it down. You We're need not to take worth it. A break. And we are not that worth it. Stopped listening. Yeah, definitely. Which is fine. Yeah, if we're do not, that. We are super not for everybody. <laughs> but if what you I'm are continuously is, offended by us, what I'm saying is, I don't. I don't care about the review. No, I don't care about I what you had to funny. say. What I'm saying is, if it's affecting you to that point, we are not to blame for that. <laughs> no. We are in no way to blame for it hurting your feelings that I said it's lazy to speak with a Southern accent. I will not be held accountable for that. Now, look, <laughs> if we have said something like that is genuinely damaging to any kind of group or something like that, yeah, totally bring it to our attention because we want to rectify that. <laughs> we never want to hurt anybody's feelings for a legitimate reason. <sighs> but if you're that but hurt over something like that, baby doll. Uh-uh. That no, and, sir. Uh, there was another one. Uh, it wasn't even a review. It was just a message of Leah laughs too long. Oh, yeah. And I got a message like... of Le- <laughs> Leah's laughs are absolutely awful. Now, that's not like... one that's like, that wasn't a no. big deal, but it's like, come the fuck on, man. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, I get it. I laugh like just it's like a heinous donkey. I understand. <laughs> but like, it's kind of part of my charm, don't you think? I do. 
I love it. When Leah loses her mind laughing. I, okay. Fair enough. I'm married to her and I enjoy it thoroughly. But, you chose this life. But like, get, Jesus Christ, y'all. <laughs> Why is Leah's laugh that big of a deal for you? Anyway. It's not. It's not her laugh. It was the uh, when she gets her laughing. It's fits the donkey and we snorts. Let it go. Yeah. Anyway, beside the point. Mm. Beside the point. I'm done ranting. If it bothers you, I want y'all to know that we, like I've said before, started doing this show for our enjoyment. So, <laughs> you know, we aren't. Um, uh, we and we're aren't also important. not holding anybody hostage. So yeah. if you need to leave for personal reasons, it's fine. Oh, God. I just love, love, love that someone was so angry (laughs) that I said, speaking with a Southern accent is just lazy because you just, all that you do is speak without moving your mouth. (laughs) That's all you do to make a Southern accent. And these people, oh, my God. Leah, it was one of the best days of my life when I read that. I know. I'm the one who showed it. it to you. I know. I loved it so much. All right. That's enough. That's enough, everybody. If you want to send us um, some reviews, you feel free. I would love to get them. I don't care if they're positive or negative. Bring them on. Seriously, bring them on. <sighs> Leah did not post a YouTube video this week, but she will this coming week. Yeah, sorry. Right, uh, right before Christmas? Yeah. I had an abscess tooth, hence the... the uh, um, Go ahead. Antibiotics that I'm on, so <laughs> I've got to have a root canal in January. So might yeah. be missing an episode then, but anyway... Mm. Um, I think you should do it all drugged up. They do not give you good enough drugs for that, but, you know. <laughs> but there will be one this Wednesday, right? Yes, there will be one this Wednesday. It's coming out the 23rd. Is that right? 23rd of December? Whatever this Wednesday is. I think it's the 23rd. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Enough. You're right. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Send us an email, southernspiritspodcast at gmail.com. Join the Patreon, patreon.com slash southernspiritspodcast. Get you some stickers and just support the show. Give us some more beer money. Send us a postcard to P.O. Box 1743, Hartsville, Alabama, 35640. Leah, is there anything else I missed? I don't believe so. Okay. Well, thank y'all so much for being here, and uh, we will see you next time. Bye, y'all. Bye.